as you noticed in the flow of the webinar, we've gone from the kind of the general to the specific, and and now I'm going to be very very specific. So um, as, and Sarah's made my job um, super easy because she's touched upon many of the things that are in the agenda for cash um, that are super groundbreaking and and new if we compare it to kind of other other documents that have been produced before. So before I start, I want you to think about four things while I'm going through the content of the agenda for cash. So the first one is about complementarity. So the idea, as, as Sarah Elmer was saying of this exercise, was to have um, a bottom-up kind of document um, that was very specific and was focused on operational issues. So even though the content of the agenda for cash will be used for strategic purposes, that content is for operational um, issues. Uh, the second thing I want you to think about is that this has been a live document that's fed into different stages of the WHS process. So given that we're on the final legs of it, I'd like you to think about how we can improve um, the document for it to become a final version. The third one is for you to remember that now is our chance to act. So this process of the WHS has been going on for years and now is the chance for us to actually do something about it. So for like all the things that we've collected in, in this exercise from practitioners around the world, how can we make sure that some of the things actually happen? And finally, um, to kind of Bear in mind that what we're trying to do uh, through this Agenda for Cash and the 100 Days Initiative and what will happen after the WHS is for CALP to help um, people that think about cash transfer programming, people that implement cash transfer programming, agencies that fund it, how can we build a shared vision for the future and a vision for the future that we're actually happy with. So without further, is um, kind of the first core um, theme in the Agenda for Cash. And the Agenda for Cash currently has six core themes, um, and I'll go through them very quickly. Um, the document is available online, so I won't spend a lot of time explaining the content. Um, and there's also a way for you to still provide feedback to it. So the first core theme is around understanding feasibility and increasing the use of cash. And this talks about um, kind of the burden and proof and assume are the right modality, and if we are to um, scale up cash, this needs to significantly change. Um, and I won't repeat what everyone else has said around this, but I'll focus on the, the commitments that people have asked um, that we include in the agenda for cash. So for um, humanitarian and development agencies, meaningful commitments around delivering cash at scale in relation to the feasibility um, are around investing in preparedness to scale up, are also in terms of developing interagency standards to better define the core elements um, of feasibility, including the concept of markets and value for money. It's great to say, yeah, we're never feasible, um, and if the markets are working, but what does exactly that mean? Is it, what markets, right? Um, it's also around uh, systematizing joint um, multi-sectoral assessments um, across sectoral mandates um, and investing more in organizational capacity. It's about developing tools and, and doing advocacy for cash-based assistance. And it's also in relation to coordination um, of uh, interagency multi-sectoral response analysis um, and how those processes can be formalized uh, to have some predictability. In relation to states, um, there's kind of a clear call to acknowledge that cash is an effective tool and to ensure that there are enough and sufficient frameworks for cash to actually be implemented. Um, and that links up to ensuring that um, IDPs can actually access cash when, when they need it. Um, and finally, to allow the expansion of um, digital financial services right from, from the private sector. Um, Wow, I realize that the donor one has the same content as the states in my presentation, but it doesn't in the agenda for cash. So for donors, we're calling for um, supporting cash as a response through the way that they assign the funds in emergencies to investing, again, in the development of, of standards for assessment to challenge organizations delivering commodity-based assistance to meet the same quality standards than cash 
and to reduce your marking, which are all commitments that are currently encompassed, some of them within the grand bargain, but there's still the need for um, donors to come forward and make those specific commitments. And finally, for the private sector is to invest in financial infrastructure and, and preparedness. So if we move on to the second core theme, it's around risk. It's about understanding risk better and managing it better to differentiate between um, the perceptions of risk related to cash and the actual risks related to cash um, and those that cannot be separated in relation to the modality but are just inherent to humanitarian assistance. Um, and the call here is to improve the identification and the understanding of the risks for everyone not only for the implementers, but also for local organizations and beneficiaries to understand how that transference of risk um, is actually be being managed or not and how that can be resourced. Um, and for donors, it's about transparency and clarity in relation to acceptable levels of risk um, and a call for action to positively reframe um, and improve the understanding of of cash within kind of the different levels of government that are involved in decision making and the general public. Um, the third one is the kind of having people at the center, and, and this includes what Sarah was talking about before in relation to kind of just kind of making um, beneficiaries responsible for the design and the implementation of the program themselves. So it's not only in terms of giving them uh, the, the option to participate, but actually to make them um, kind of sit on the driver's seat of, of the program and the commitment in relation to that is around developing standards uh, for data protection um, and actually upholding all of the guidance and, and, the, and the different tools that there are in terms of meaningful inclusion of beneficiaries um, and putting security risk of beneficiaries and staff at the top um, in relation to developing tailored um, cash programming. Um, and it's about reaching all in need, it's about including the most marginalized and, and the most vulnerable, such as older people and people with disabilities, who may also be those with least access to financial services. And for donors is to invest in these efforts um, and to invest in people-centered response analysis um, so that we can move uh, forward from kind of siloed um, sector-specific response analysis. And the fourth category is around localization and preparedness. And for those of you who are familiar with the WHS process and the Agenda for Humanity, you'll see that um, many of these topics are the same topics under uh, the ending need commitment in the Agenda for Humanity. So this is about being as local as possible, as international as necessary. It's a call for agencies to use existing infrastructure to invest in preparedness to strengthen the links between humanitarian cash transfer programming and social protection and to mainstream and fund multi-year programs for preparedness. Um, it's also about featuring cash um, in UN agencies' operational plans so cash approaches can be contextualized and not centralized. Um, for states, it's in terms of investing in their own capacity to implement CTP um, and interestingly, it's about using existing social protection systems as a driver of speed and efficiency for emergency response, of course, when it's appropriate. Um, but it's about enabling the, inter, uh, the integration of aid providers and linking cash transfer programming to existing welfare payment systems um, while still recognizing that each part has its own area of expertise. And for donors, is um, to invest in preparedness and, and to ensure that there's enough funding to actually do um, stronger linkages um, to ensure that the grand bargain, um, let's say, negotiations in terms of benefits actually um, trickle down to local organizations funded by NGOs, but also to NGOs when funded by the UN. Um, and it's about investing in technical skills, right? Calling donors to make that um, specific commitment. Um, then the next one is around collective impact and coordination and this is, this is very typical kind of WHS um, language um, but it's something that the cash community has been discussing for years now. It's around being more effective and more efficient in the way that we provide assistance. 
Um, and it's based on the idea that we already all have a, a kind of an idea of collective impact. We all want what's best for beneficiaries. What we haven't been very good at yet is to organize ourselves um, around that. And it's about participating in genuine multilateral efforts to make that happen, to creating platforms for coordination independent of mandates, uh, to creating uh, platforms for information management and payments, to do joint advocacy efforts, to have one strong voice, to have predictable coordination leadership. And for donors, again, is to ensure that there's enough resourcing to carry this forward, um, but also to clarify where the limits are in terms of um, there's complementarity between in a doesn't become a race to the top where only the big ones get all the funding, um, but there's enough capacity around for the best uh, place locally um, to get funding to do cash programming. It's about um, defining the minimal levels of accountability that are needed and coming up with guidance for multi-sectoral um, outcome indicators. It's about providing multi-year funding. It's about funding innovation. And finally, it's about creating a different type of relationship with the private sector. So the call from the Agenda for Cash is not to work more with the private sector. It's about working in a different way. It's about uh, building relationships that generate value for both parties. And the calls of action here are around agencies building and maintaining capacity to engage with the private sector um, in a sustainable way to be bold and uh, hold new partnerships with innovators from the private sector and to coordinate between agencies to use open and shared payment systems. Um, from states, it's around supporting um, the investment for the expansion of digital financial services in high-risk countries and for donors um, to build um, the capacity and strengthen the linkages between the humanitarian and the private sector. For the private sector in particular, the, the calls for action are in relation to partnering with the humanitarian sector to de develop and implement a code of conduct for, for the engagement in cash-based um, programming, particularly regarding data protection and the rules for engagement. It's in, about increased investment in financial service infrastructure, particularly in high-risk countries, and to develop um, mechanisms that would uh, facilitate pathways to financial inclusion, um, including kind of digital payment mechanisms. So overall, um, this is the main content, right, of the agenda for cash. Um, and moving forward, there will be a mechanism around all of these commitments in relation to cash and other things. Um, after the WHS. So the main question hanging in the air right now is how can we shape this agenda for cash to influence the system effectively? Um, and again, to, to reiterate finally to, to end my presentation that this is not a cow or the cash um, practitioner. So if you can access hundreddaysofcash.org and provide your feedback, that'd be great.